In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the buck or step down converter. So remember that a buck converter is a device that steps the voltage down. So for this example, we're going to step the voltage V in to a lower voltage at the output. So I've gone ahead and drawn the circuit for the buck converter here on the left. And so as you can see, we have one power BJT, we have one diode, and then we have an inductor and a capacitor, which is going to help to filter out the output current ripple and the output voltage ripple. And so for this example, let's say that we're going to switch Q1 on from 0 to pi. So from 0 to pi, Q1 is going to be on. And then from pi to 2 pi, Q1 is going to be off. And then we're going to repeat that again. So the period of this waveform is going to be 2 pi. So this right here is a period. And then we're going to switch it on from 0 to pi, which is half of the cycle. So we're going to provide a control signal to Q1 to switch it on only for half of the cycle. And then we're going to remove that to turn it off for the remainder of the cycle. And so what's going to happen in this circuit is that we're going to have two states. Let's call state 1. It's going to be from 0 to pi. And so we know that transistor Q1 is on because we're switching it on. So we're forcing it to be on. And so what that does is that it reverse biases diode D1. Because remember that the anode of diode is right here and the cathode is right here. So this is going to be voltage VAK. And for diode D1 to be on, the anode to cathode voltage needs to be positive. However, since we're switching Q1 on, we're applying the positive terminal of VN to the cathode of diode D1. And we're putting the negative terminal of VN to the anode of diode D1. So essentially, we're applying a negative voltage on diode D1, which is going to reverse bias it. So it's going to turn it off. So we know that for state 1, diode D1 is off. Now knowing that, what we can do is we can write the voltage loop equation around the circuit. So the circuit then is going to look like this. Vn through Q1, diode D1 is off. So that's going to look like an open circuit. Through L1 and then through V out, back to Vn. So if we write the voltage loop around that loop, we get that minus Vn plus VL1 plus V out is going to be equal to zero. And so all I'm doing here is I'm applying KVL or, or Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop of the circuit. And so we know then that the voltage across the inductor VL1 is going to be equal to VN minus V out. Now when we switch diode Q1 off, so I'm going to use a different color for this, we're going to call this state 2, which is going to be from pi to 2 pi, so the remainder of the cycle. Then Q1 is off. So essentially the input voltage is disconnected from the rest of the circuit. And so the loop for that state is going to be around here. So D1 is going to be on through V out back to D1. And the reason why that stays on is because remember that for the state 1, we were applying a voltage across inductor L1, which means that we were storing energy in the inductor. And so once BJT Q1 turns off, that energy needs to flow somewhere and it's going to flow through the free willing diode D1. So it's going to force diode D1 to turn on. So we know then that for state 2, Q1 is off because we've intentionally turned it off. And diode D1 is on. Now if we write the voltage loop around that loop, we're going to get that VL1 plus V out is going to be equal to 0. And again, the voltage in the diode is going to be zero because the diode is just going to look like a short circuit. So then we know that for state 2, VL1 is actually going to be minus V out. And so you can see here that I'm writing the equation across inductor L1 for both states. And that's intentional because what we're going to say is that if we assume that the converter is operating in steady state, then we have to assume that the energy that's stored in inductor L1 from 0 to pi when the input voltage is connected to the circuit. That has to be equal to the energy that's discharged from inductor L1 from pi to 2 pi when the input voltage is disconnected from the rest of the circuit. So let me say that again. For the converter to be operating in steady state, which is what we're assuming, the energy from 0 to pi that's stored in inductor L1 needs to be equal to the energy that's discharged from inductor L1 from pi to 2 pi when the input voltage is disconnected from the circuit, such that the average of the voltage across inductor L1 over one period is 0. So let's write that down. So we're saying that from 0 to pi, so 
dt. Remember that dt is the point when q1 is on times the voltage across inductor L1 during that time. So times V in minus V out plus the voltage across the inductor L1 during the time when Q1 is off. So that's going to be from T minus DT, which is from pi to 2 pi, or the portion of the waveform where Q1 is off, times the voltage across the inductor during that time, which is equal to minus V out. So all of that needs to be equal to zero, because again, the energy that's stored when Q1 is on, needs to be equal to the energy that's discharged from inductor L1 when Q1 is off. So another way to write this down would be, we can say dt V in minus V out. And then I'm going to factor out T from here. So 1 minus D times T minus V out is going to be equal to 0. So the T's cancel out. And I'm going to distribute now, so d v in minus d v out plus, or excuse me, minus v out minus times minus plus d v out is going to be equal to zero. So d v out cancel out, and we get that v out is going to be equal to d v n. So this is the equation for the buck converter. Essentially, just like we looked at in the basic chopper example, the output voltage is going to be equal to the input voltage times the duty ratio. So we can adjust the duty ratio to decrease the output voltage however we want. So for a duty ratio of 0.5, then the output voltage is going to be equal to half of the input voltage if we lower the duty ratio to, let's say, 0.2, then the output voltage is going to be equal to 20% of the input voltage, and so on and so forth. Now notice here that since V out is equal to D V in, and D, which is the duty ratio, can only be a number from 0 to 1, then the output voltage can only be lower than the input voltage. It cannot be higher than it. Now one thing to note here, too, is that in practical applications, the duty ratio is usually kept somewhere below 0.8 to 0.9 at most. You don't really want to keep D too close to 1 because that would mean that Q1 would be on the whole time. And so that's going to cause too much stress in the transistor. So but from the circuit, you can control the output voltage somewhere between 0 to 0 0.8, 0 0.9 of the input voltage.